Suppose that we want a function whose derivative is little f of x equals 3x squared minus 7x plus 10. Let's call that function big f of x. Okay, if we differentiate some term, we have to get 3x squared. So if you think about it, if we differentiate 3 halves, um, let's see now, we want, uh, well, we want to end up with a 3. So I leave the 3 to one side and look at x squared. Well, we differentiate a third x cubed, we will get x squared. Okay, we multiply 3 by 1 third to get 1, and we take 1 from the power to get 2. So if we differentiate this here, we will get 1x squared. And then we have 3 times x squared, giving us the 3x squared that we're after. So we are doing the reverse of differentiation, of course. Instead of subtracting 1 from the power, we add 1 to the power. And instead of multiplying in, um, in front by the power, we're dividing by the new power. So the new power is 3. So we're dividing by 3. So that's why we have 1 third. And the 3 is just a constant left in front. We can look at minus 7x in a similar way. We just note down the the constant factor minus 7, we have x to the 1, we do the opposite of differentiation, we add 1 to the power to get x squared, and we divide by the new power, which is 2. So I can put a half in here, or I can write x squared over 2, or I can write a half x squared. So to check this, we just differentiate, multiply 2 by 7 halves, well that'll give us seven, or minus 7, and we take 1 from the power, 1 from 2 gives us the 1. Finally, we want a function whose derivative is 10. Well, that's straightforward. 10x. We differentiate 10x with respect to x. We just get the constant in front of x, which is 10. More formally, we could think of 10 as 10 times x to the power of 0. So we add 1 onto 0 to get x to the power of 1. And we divide by the new power, which is 1. But in general, every time we see a constant, we just tack on the variable. So we're integrating with respect to x, so we just tack on x. Now, we can also stick on a number here. I could stick on plus 111.3. Why can I do that? Well, if I differentiate a number with respect to x, I get 0. This is just a constant function. So I can stick any number I like on here. I could have stuck on, say, minus 14.2 anything at all. So to indicate that we can stick on any number, we put in plus c. So c stands for any number. It's an arbitrary constant. It can be anything. Okay, so here's the um, function simplified a bit. Okay, this function, big F of x, is called the antiderivative, fairly obvious name, or indefinite integral of little f of x with respect to x. Now we can write the indefinite integral of little f of x like this, and I'll explain a lot more about this notation in later videos. So we put the function that we are integrating in here, we write dx after it, because the independent variable that we're integrating with respect to is x. Then we put this symbol in front this looks like an elongated s, and indeed this is related to the sum of certain quantities. And we'll see that later when we're discussing the area under a curve, how this idea of the antiderivative or indefinite integral links into getting the area under a curve by summing rectangles. So that's why you have this shape, that symbol that looks like an elongated s. Now the reason that we have the word indefinite is because we have this arbitrary constant c. So you could think of it as there being not a definite answer to the problem. That's a crude way of putting it, but c can be any value. Um, so we have no definite value for the antiderivative or indefinite integral. Let's look at another example. Suppose we want the indefinite integral or antiderivative of x to the power of 5. Well, we add 1 onto the power, like we saw in the previous example, 
and we divide by the new power. So there's a 1 in front of this, so we could write 1 over 5 plus 1. Or we could write it like this. And we have our arbitrary constant c. So that's uh, x to the power of 6 over 6, or 1 sixth x to the power of 6 plus c. So we can check our answer by just differentiating this. We differentiate this, we get 6 times 1 sixth gives us 1x, take 1 from the power to get 5. When you differentiate the constant, we get 0. Now in general, if we have x to the power of n, provided n is not minus 1, which I'll explain in a second, to integrate this, we just add 1 onto the power, so n becomes n plus 1, and we divide in front by the new power, so we have 1 over n plus 1. Now the reason n can't equal minus 1 is because then we would be dividing by 0. Okay, let's just see that. So we add 1 onto minus 1, well that's going to give us 0, no problem there. But then we have 1 over um, um, uh, minus 1 plus 1. Well that's 0. We cannot divide any number by 0. Okay, 0 will not go into 1. So we need a different approach for handling this function here. We'll cover that later. Now we saw in the differentiation section that the derivative of sine of x with respect to x is cos x. We can turn that around to say that the indefinite integral of cos of x with respect to x is sine x, but this time we add on an arbitrary constant c. I could have shown that constant in here, of course. If we differentiate c with respect to x, we get 0. So we get cos x plus 0. So if we integrate cos x with respect to x, we get sine x plus c. Now I'll explain a small little bit about notation without being rigorous. Um, we can treat this thing as a fraction, even though in reality it's not like a normal fraction. It's the result of a limiting process. It's the limit of a quantity, actually as delta x goes to 0, but for now we can treat it as a fraction. And on the right hand side we have cos of x over 1 of course, so we can cross multiply. So we multiply d of sine x times 1, that gives us d of sine x. And we multiply cos x by dx, cos of x times dx. Now, what we have here are differentials. This thing is called a differential. So we have differential on the left hand side and we have a, another differential on the right hand side. When we see that situation we can integrate both sides. We can just stick an integral sign in front of both sides. Now when we see the integral of d of something we just get whatever that something is. So we just get sine of x. And here on the right hand side we are integrating cos of x with respect to x and we know that that's sine of x. Well, we actually have constants as well here. We could put a plus c here. Although we have to put the same constant on both sides here. Both sides are to be equal. 